Welcome everybody to a brand new podcast called Gardening in Botswana. It's June in Botswana and I would like to give you a tour of my garden. It's an indigenous garden this side and over the future of podcasts I'm going to be doing various different things on gardening and showing you different tips and techniques that I have. Um, also if you're unaware of our Gardens Botswana magazine this you can access on the website. All the PDFs are available free online so please have a look uh, down below. And if you like this podcast, please like, subscribe and follow. Thanks so much. We'll go on this tour now. So I'm just going to start in the aloe garden. Here we have a lot of different aloes. That one is aloe spicata. Then we have aloe cryptopoda, which is also known as aloe wikensi. We've got a lot of aloe shibordi over here and an aloe globular gemma. And this one is a kudu lily. It's called Pacopodium saundersi. And over here we have an aloe fostery. And then aloe arborescence, looking really nice and big. On this side, we have a variety of different aloe shibordis. Some from Kenya, which is an aloe kulalensis. And an aloe tenual, which is known as the kraal aloe. And hidden underneath, we actually have a couple of asclepiads. So if you have a look over here, you might just see it hidden by the rock over there. Asclepiads have carrion flowers that uh, smell of sort of rotting flesh so that they attract flies to pollinate them. Here we have some mouse birds that are eating the gruia berries which are ripening at this time of year. And we're just going to take a walk down this path and I'm just going to show you a couple of different plants around the yard that are in flower at the moment. So this particular plant is a justicia. It has very tiny white flowers. This one's Dioscoristi and this one is a Felicia. It's a little bit difficult with the sun. And the next one is a nettle called Philirophyllum. So this here is a Cleome. And here we just have some grasses. And, and here we just have some Cahautia flowers wedged in between some rocks. And this one is a Pavetta. It's unusual to be flowering at this time of year. This is Fever Tea, uh, Lipia Javanica. A local name is called Mosugajan. And here we're just having a view over the yard. And this one in particular is a lantana, and right next to a milkweed. The milkweed is quite amazing. This is a wild basil, and this one is Hermstedia flecky. We're just going to go through here just to show you the view through to Modipani Hill and some lovely Venonia flowers. And here we have Gaka, which is also known as Kiwano or Africa Horned Cucumber. And you can hear my cockerels crowing in the background as well. Here we have a couple of wild African cucumbers. Um, and we have a lot of lovely vines in the yard. This pink flower is Indigophora. And right next to it is Aloparvi bracteata. Moving on, we have the burgundy bean. And, and here we have a Milhania with beautiful buttercup-like flowers. And this is an Ipomea and Alo petricola. And this is just giving a view over the big rock and Audi Hill in the background. This lovely yellow flower is a crotillaria and that's its pod as well. And this here is Chemicrista absis with the orange flowers and right next to it is this Kaifakarpa which has very prickly flowers but close up really quite pretty. And this here is Waltheria with the yellow flowers. Just a view of the rocks again. This is Endostemon, it's a little bit like basil, Lediboria, Hermania, Dicericarium, and some wild sedges. And this is Acaranthes, the leaves are all going a beautiful burgundy colour. And we've got Dolls Protea, another Epimia, and these are lovely wild Kalinkoes, uh, succulents that grow underneath acacia bushes. That's Valeria verbula, that's another Waltheria, and that is just a sea flava together with the Kalinkoes. And this is an epiphyte, which the, the mm. sunbirds love. This is a herpesium flower, uh, the last one that I've seen actually in flower at the moment. Yeah, you can see its leaves and a few more buds. Over here we have some cedar flowers and often found in these grassy sort of patches. Um, and here we have Geigeria, lovely yellow flower again. And now we're going on to these Lucas flowers, which look a little bit like acrotomes, but they are slightly different. And you can see the ants rushing up and down them. This is another type of Lucas. And here we have Bucknera, um, which is a bit like Lantana in 
the flower, but uh, it's a, just a small little flower that's an annual. And here we have the different hibiscus. This is hibiscus micranthus. Sometimes it's confused with hibiscus mutatus because they have very small flowers for the hibiscus family. This is hibiscus panduriformis. And I'm hoping it's going to flower, and that's the bud that's about to open. And here we have hibiscus ingleri, which has the most beautiful flowers, but really hairy, neckly type of leaves, which are quite difficult uh, to get out if you bump into them. And here we have these indigo flowers, which are found in between the rocks all over. They have very tiny, tiny purple flowers, and uh, beautiful little pods as well. Um, but they spread like all through the rocks, really incredible. This is Xerophyta retinervus. Uh, it's when it doesn't have enough um, water or it's very cold, the leaves turn a lovely purple color. So just to end the tour of this yard, um, I just thought I would pan up from the rocks up here over to Modipani Mountain again and this tree that you can see in the foreground is actually a neem tree so it's not indigenous but it's a very useful tree to have as it can be used as an organic pesticide and that is the end of the tour of our yard hope you've enjoyed it